Let's go electric here. Today is Sunday, January 4th, 2026, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Fourth quarter vehicle sales figures are already starting to roll in, offering some clarity regarding the extent to which EV sales have retreated in the wake of sweeping international policy changes. Leading American EV maker Tesla announced its fourth quarter 2025 production and delivery figures, revealing 434,358 vehicles produced and 418,227 delivered worldwide. This marked a nearly 16% year-over-year drop in deliveries from Q4 of 2024's 495,570 units, falling slightly short of the company's own analyst consensus of 422,850. For the full year, Tesla produced 1,654,667 vehicles and delivered 1,636,129 units, representing an approximately 8.6% decline from 2024's 1,789,226 deliveries, representing the second consecutive annual drop. Interestingly, their average transaction price has been stable while some competitors have offered aggressive discounts. Tesla's higher priced S, X, and Cybertruck EVs were hit the hardest, with 50,850 units sold, down from 85,133. That includes about 1,000 Tesla Cybertrucks worth at least $80 million, reportedly purchased by Elon Musk's other company, SpaceX. In the company's year-end video recap published on X, Tesla claimed Model Y secured the title of the best-selling vehicle in 2025. Analysts insist that the best-selling car title belongs to Toyota's RAV4. No hard figures or qualifiers were provided by Tesla to substantiate the claim, so we aren't sure what kind of disqualifiers they might be using to divide or otherwise disqualify RAV4 volume data. Tesla also published a video this week demonstrating the fast charging capabilities of their upcoming semi, hitting an impressive 1.2 megawatt peak charging speed. Tesla has said they will start production of the new semi in the first half of 2026 and ramp up that production by the second half of the year. That would make it nearly a decade since they first introduced the product. While vehicle volumes have softened, Tesla's energy division stood out deploying a record 14.2 gigawatt hours of storage products in Q4 alone, a 29% increase from the prior year's quarter. Full year 2025 deployments reached 46.7 gigawatt hours, nearly 49% higher than 2024's 31.4 gigawatt hours, driven by strong demand for Megapack utility scale systems and Powerwall home units. We should point out that earlier this year, at least 310 Megapacks worth about three $300 million were purchased and installed by Elon Musk's other company, XAI, followed by another $375 million in Q4. That represents about three quarters of a billion dollars in self-dealing sales. In the global pure electric vehicle race, Tesla's 1.6 million deliveries for 2025 were surpassed by Chinese rival BYD, which sold approximately 2.26 million all-electric vehicles. BYD's average EV selling price is under $15,000, while Tesla's average sale price is about three times greater at about $45,000. This marked the first time BYD claimed the annual all-electric sales crown, highlighting its rapid growth in cost-competitive models and expanding overseas markets. BYD's total new energy sales for 2025 was about 4.5 million, with nearly 50% or 2.24 million of their production being gas-burning plug-in hybrids. Tesla remains the world's largest purely electric automaker by a wide margin. China's upcoming no-fire, no-explosion battery safety standard, effective July 2026, that requires packs to prevent thermal runaway propagation, will go into effect and Tesla will be among the automakers which must comply. The company is accustomed to fluidity around battery supply and already uses Chinese suppliers for its Shanghai production, including CATL and BYD cells. We will keep our eyes and ears open for more developments on their strategy for 2026 and the new regulations coming from China. 
We do have some insight on battery strategy already, though. Late in 2025, South Korean supplier LNF revealed in a regulatory filing that they drastically reduced the value of a high nickel cathode material contract with Tesla from $2.9 billion to just $7,386, effectively canceling most of the deal originally signed in 2023 for supplies through 2025. This move coincides with a focus on lower cost EV and more than 30% annual decline of its premium S, X, and Cybertruck models, which rely on performance cells with high nickel content. Around the same time, Tesla confirmed 8 gigawatt hours of annual 4680 cell production will be installed at their Giga Berlin factory, enough for about 100,000 EVs per year. Vehicle sales aren't the only factor which will affect revenue figures for American automakers this year. Last year, Tesla reported about $2.76 billion of profit in the form of carbon credit sales. As we've reported, that U.S. market was eradicated by policy on July 4th of 2025. Tesla will hold their full Q4 in 2025 financial report call on January 28th, and we'll relay details about the bottom line after that. Fellow US EV maker Rivian announced their results as well, stating they produced 10,974 vehicles and delivered 9,745 of them in the fourth quarter of 2025, which was a decline of about 31% from 14,183 deliveries in the same period of 2024. For the full year of 2025, Rivian delivered 42,247 vehicles, down approximately 18% from 51,579 in 2024, with production totaling 42,284 units. Rivian stated that both quarterly and annual figures aligned with its internal expectations and fell within its revised public guidance range of 41,500 to 43,500 deliveries, reflecting demand pressure for premium priced EVs amid the expiration of federal tax credits, elevated interest rates, and a competitive premium automobile market. The company's revenue will be greatly impacted by the carbon credit erasure too. In 2024, they reported three $325 million of profit from that source, and that was strictly from the U.S. market. That loss will be more than offset by the $1 billion of revenue they collected from their joint venture with Volkswagen back in July. Rivian's upcoming launch of the more affordable R2 SUV in the first half of this year is expected to boost volumes for 2026 with a ramped annual capacity of up to 155,000 units per year. The company plans to release full Q4 and 2025 financial results on February 12th, followed by a webcast. We have talked about China's new battery safety regulations and the ripple effect they'll have on global EV production and safety expectations. The world's largest producer of automobiles also implemented a mandatory new national standard called Limits of Energy Consumption for Electric Vehicles, which officially became law on January 1st of this year. The standard replaces previous voluntary guidelines and imposes binding electricity consumption thresholds for pure battery electric passenger cars with a maximum design mass not exceeding 3,500 kilograms or 7,700 pounds. Limits are scaled by curb weight, with models around 2 tons or 4,400 pounds capped at 15.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers or 62 miles, which are approximately 11% stricter than prior recommendations. Non-compliant newly produced models cannot gain type approval or be listed for sale in China, effectively barring them from the market. Compliance is also tied to eligibility for tax exemptions in 2026 to 2027. Existing models listed in the tax exemption catalog by the end of 2025 will carry over only if they meet the new limits. Officials say the measures will promote energy saving technologies, boost average EV driving range by about 7% without larger batteries, and phase out high consumption models amid China's push for more sustainable mobility. Many of China's current best-selling EVs 
already comply, including Tesla's Model Y, which achieves around 12 to 13.4 kilowatt hours per 62 miles, and their more efficient Model 3 that typically achieves 11 to 12.5 kilowatt hours per 62 miles. This widens the gap with foreign automakers, who may face higher adaptation costs in a market where Chinese brands already hold over 50% share. Outgoing generation EVs from brands like BMW, Mercedes-Benz, or Volkswagen may require revisions to avoid phase-out. Producer Tim and I will be headed to the Consumer Electronics Show this week, where we plan to check out all the latest in electric transportation, including Chinese EVs debuting at the show, like this one from Starry Sky Automotive. The company is backed by home appliance giant Dream Technology and is set to launch the world premiere of its first electric car. The sleek, low-slung four-door supercar with aggressive aerodynamics and wide fenders promises over 1,000 horsepower and a spicy 0 to 62 miles per hour acceleration time of under 1.8 seconds. After announcing their intent to jump into the EV market back in late August, the company said they would pick a site to build a factory in Berlin, Germany, near Tesla's Giga Berlin, and collaborate with French banking giant BNP Paribas to launch two new models in 2027. Hopefully this vacuum giant can succeed in bringing an EV to market where Dyson failed. While we're at CES, we'll also be on the lookout for the new Mercedes GLB Electric, the BMW iX3, Cataran Project V, the Tensor Robocar built by VinFast, Segway's Mayan e-bike, more than 30 EV component announcements from Hyundai Mobis, and much, much more. If there's anything you want us to check out, drop it in the comments below. We'll be going live for subscribers and members posting frequently on social media, and we have several interviews scheduled. Our channel members will also get some exciting exclusive content too. This week, we published our 2025 Rewind video, which covers our top three EV advancements from the year. Those of you who watched all 52 episodes of The Current will find it a great test of your memory. I've linked that video in the description below so you can check it out. This afternoon, Sunday, January 4th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, producer Tim and I are thrilled to host the first official episode of The Live Wire here on YouTube. We plan to go live for about 30 minutes to an hour. The Live Wire is an opportunity to unpack these news stories, as well as some which didn't make the cut for this 10-minute format, while adding some projection and editorial, and most importantly, answering questions from subscribers and members in the live chat. We'll candidly reply to some of the most thoughtful comments you leave on the current two. As a reminder, if you would like to support our work, please consider subscribing and sharing this video elsewhere online. We've finally launched the Misco Electric channel membership program too, and dozens of you have already joined, which is a great start. Members gain access to The Current as soon as we finish editing it, sometimes on Saturday night or afternoon, and a long list of perks. This week, we also sent out our first email newsletter to about 100 of you. It covers the full breadth of our work on all three of our YouTube channels, in-person events, educational campaigns, and discount links for EV and e-mobility products we've reviewed. If you don't want to miss the next round, sign up at the bottom of our website at MissGoElectric.com. Thank you for joining us this week, and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go Electric!